So hello everyone and welcome to the MIC uh, Student Experience Virtual Sessions. My name is Patrick Cosgrove and I'm the Student Recruitment Officer here at Mary Immaculate College. So in this session we'll be chatting to um, two Bachelor of Arts students, uh, Gronia who will be representing uh, or Gronia who will be representing um, uh, theatre studies and uh, Noel who will be representing philosophy and they'll be just telling us a little bit about the uh, subjects and also about their MIC student experience. Now unfortunately we had a representative lined up for media and communication studies but unfortunately due to unforeseen circumstances uh, they weren't able to join us but we'll still be able to get plenty of information from Gronia and Noel today. So there is a question and answer uh, function available um, in our, the chat function. If you do have a question and you want to put it to our students, you can just type it in and I'll ask them towards the end of the session. So just to begin with, um, I might start with Gronia first. I might just get uh, Gronia to introduce yourself and uh, then we'll go to Noel. Hello. Um, I'm Gronia and I'm going into my fourth year in Mary I uh, studying theatre studies alongside with English as well in the BA Joint Arts. Great and uh, Noel do you just want to introduce yourself? Uh, hello my name is Noel Lindsay and I've just um, finished my third year of PhD um, studies and I took philosophy and history um, as an undergraduate. This feels like university challenge here. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Noel. I suppose, no, no, it's great to have you, Noel, and that you have a unique experience and that you're, you know, coming in as a mature student and uh, you also came in through the foundation cert as well. And we, we might touch on that a little bit in a while. But um, I suppose we'll just start off maybe with Gronia. So, uh, Gronia, um, you might just tell us, Gronia, I suppose, what drew you to the Bachelor of Arts degree at Mary Immaculate College? And then I suppose, why theatre studies? Um, you know, what was it about the subject and, um, you know, why did you choose to, to take it to degree level? Well, um, to be quite honest with you, I chose to study arts mainly because I had no clue as to what I wanted to do with my life. Um, I knew that I loved English, so obviously I was like, I'm going to choose arts. I can choose a second subject alongside it. The nice thing about Mary I is that you can choose four subjects at the beginning which is quite handy for me because, as I said, I had no clue what I wanted to do. And to be quite honest with you, theatre was a last minute decision, um, which surprises me because it is now. Honestly, I think I, I don't know what I would do without it. It has become one of the best decisions I've ever made in terms of what I want to do with my life. Um, it's very much like English, but it's more it feels more technical and I feel like I'm getting more of a I can see a better career path with theatre, especially with the professors inside, because they're so, so helpful when it comes to the more practical side of theatre. And I think in the end, I chose it because I felt like I could see myself working there for decades. OK, and Gronia, did you have a background in theatre or, you know, would a prospective student thinking of taking it as a subject, would that be necessary or could you just go to it having no experience of the straight, area at all? Yeah, straight away you could go there. Um, I had a tiny bit of experience with theatre, I think. I did one year of it as a child, um, a little bit in secondary school, but nothing major because I remember sitting in the first class and everybody had so much experience with theatre and I felt kind of I kind of felt a bit like an imposter because I was like, I don't know as much as everyone. But the point of going to college and learning is to learn. Um, so the professors, they don't care if you just have no experience in theatre or if you've been doing theatre your whole life because they're going to treat you the same anyway. You're going to be learning the same thing as everyone else. So you, you'll catch up, but you don't you don't need any experience in theatre. You just need a love for it, I think. Yeah, I think that's a good point, I suppose, not to be put off maybe by not having prior experience. Don't let that uh, hold it against you. Um, I suppose a great thing about the arts degree in Mary Immaculate College in first year, I'm sure you, you mentioned it, Gronia, was the fact you can choose from four, so you choose four subjects from a possible 13. Did you find, um, did you find that very beneficial maybe in terms of you could have 
you know, obviously you, you tried out theatre studies and you found that you loved it, you know, was that uh, something that really um, appealed to you with the arts degree? Oh, definitely. Um, I remember I chose history and media as well. Um, and everything that I learned in first year, I still kind of use even now that I'm not studying them. Because especially with the theatre degree, it's not very it's not too practical. There's still a lot of literature to it. There's a lot of theory to it. So you're kind of mixing in all of the history and then all of the kind of what works on stage and what doesn't work on stage in terms of the storytelling and in terms of the history behind it. So definitely I find that whatever you choose in first year, it's going to carry on regardless of whether or not you choose to study it further. So I think okay. it's definitely yeah. beneficial. Yeah, yeah, I, I really think it is that that opportunity you get to try four subjects and then obviously at the end of first year you'll you'll decide which two you take to degree level. It just gives you that extra flexibility, I suppose, to try maybe different subjects that you mightn't have uh, have thought about taking before. Yes, so um, we might just go to Noel next. Um, Noel, I suppose you've uh, kind of a, a very different experience maybe to Grania in that I think you came in as a mature student and you possibly came through the foundation um, uh, certificate program. You might just tell us what that was and, and how you, I suppose, got to as far as the arts degree and how you're now, I think, doing a postgraduate program in Mary Immaculate. Um, I enrolled in 2010 for the um, foundation certificate, um, undergraduate certificate, and um, initially didn't want to do it. I thought I could have gone straight in, but they covered, um, I think it was seven, seven subjects. And after two or three of the lecturers came in and gave their lectures, I realized how beneficial and how much I needed. Um, it gave, for someone like me coming in 30 years after leaving school, more or less, um, it was kind of, it, it got me reacclimatized to the um, environment, learning environment. Um, the lecturers were very understanding um they realized we were all coming in from a different place from from school leavers and um they they made it very accessible very understandable and it was there that i actually got my basic love of philosophy um i had the, the foundation course you got to know other people the same age or the same vintage and and you could share your concerns about um re-engaging with education after such a long period of time um, the atmosphere around campus, Miria itself, um, I was astounded at how relaxed it was, how welcoming it was, um, how much you felt a part of it and how much you were encouraged to feel um, a part of it. And that was again by the lecturers being very open, being very generous with their time and being very understanding and empathetic. And um, I, I got through that and initially thought I wouldn't continue on, but then I did. And as Grania said, um, the four subjects is a massive help um, because I had intended to do psychology and English because you could write the word and then write about it. So, um, but then as I got into, and you have, there's also an elective in first year, which gives you an additional um, um, option. So I got in and I got a love of philosophy during that foundation program. And um, it was Dr. Chambers took us for, he's the head of history department, he took us for history. And he challenged my understanding of what I thought history was. And I found that fascinating. Um, and uh, uh, there was a, you could see the love of the subject coming out of these people, the enthusiasm for it, and, and that is infectious. Um, so when I got into first year, it was philosophy and history that took over. Um, and one complements the other beautifully because it's like Ron, you said that if you love language, you will love philosophy. If you love history, you will love philosophy. If you love English, you will love philosophy. It's a mother load for all the other subjects of understanding. Um, it'll bring you back to the ancient Greeks of how people thought of how we understood our thinking at that time. And there's a beauty of fascination attached with that. Um, it'll bring us up through the Middle Ages, the Renaissance, how our thinking changed. Um, how different philosophers change how society is structured. Um, if you want to challenge um, your intellect, if, 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 if you want 
to be to, to see how um, writing is structured. If you love writing and you love language, you will definitely love philosophy. The department is so open. Now the history department, obviously I'm doing a postgrad history, is also very open. I don't want to seem like a traitor in the camp. <laughs> but the philosophy department is so engaging. Um, they will put out thoughts and there's a dialectic that goes on between you and the lecturer and the class. Um, they give you an opportunity to do in-class presentations. Um, you're encouraged to th think freely. You're encouraged to express yourself freely. Um, and their use of language, how they don't, they don't waste a word. Um, the beauty of the language, how it's structured, and it will help you in any other subject that you're considering, because it is it is the basis of all of those. Um, so if anyone is considering philosophy, it would be an excellent choice. Yeah, and I, I think it's great to know, know that you had such a positive experience or such a positive interaction with the lecturers and how they've been you know, I suppose they've obviously had, had quite a strong effect on you, just even from the view of your subjects there, philosophy and history as well. Yeah. Um, I suppose one of the topics that often comes up with people when, they, when they're starting college is, I suppose, adjusting to lectures and tutorials, as, as, as I suppose, compared to what they had in secondary school. So growing yeah, um, you know, you're probably, you're obviously more recently out of secondary school than Noel. How did you find that coming into, into third level, um, you know, lecture tutorials versus the way things were in secondary school? And is, is there any tips you'd have for uh, maybe a first year in September, how they could best manage that transition? Um, well, personally, I love the transition. Um, I can get stressed out very easily. So I found that the, the way the timetable was structured, I felt I had more power over how many classes I could take in a day, especially with tutorials. In English, I think you can pick out the different time slots in to what suits you. So you could choose a Monday to do a tutorial class or a Wednesday. And I found that massively helpful because I could just, I could schedule my time a lot better. And in terms of doing kind of homework or doing essays, I found that so much easier in college because of the fact that I had that bit of extra time to actually sit down and properly research what I was learning about. Um, in terms of transitioning, I think it's just a case of kind of being open and kind of allowing yourself to kind of have a bit of fun at the beginning, uh, to have a bit of fun with the subjects as in like, you know, try them out, try what you like. If you don't like it, that's fine. But definitely if you're somebody who doesn't like that structure of getting up at 9 a.m., coming home at six just to do even more work, I think definitely don't be afraid that college is going to be exactly like that because you're still, you're still putting in a lot of work, but it's mainly on your own terms. It's your own learning. You're taking that and you're bringing it with you. Nobody's going to force you to uh, sit down and write an essay. It's up to you. And I think in terms of myself, so much more beneficial and so much more successful in my learning in college than I ever was, which is quite nice to know. Because uh, secondary school, I didn't fail, but I wasn't doing as well as I hoped I would. So it was definitely a fear going into college that I would start failing classes, but when I started succeeding a lot better than I thought I would, I knew that uh, I knew that I was in the right place, the right learning environment. Yeah, I think that's some great points you've made there, Grony. I suppose there is that structure in the arts degree, but there's also that flexibility there as well. And I suppose at the end of the day, a lot of it comes down to individual responsibility as well, and and you know what, what it's down to the each individual student as well. Um, I might go to Noel now. Noel, obviously you touched on it there um, just uh, in, in a few minutes ago. Obviously you came into college um, through the, into the Bachelor of Arts uh, degree through the foundation certificate and came in as a mature student. Um, how did you find going back to, to college, Noel, as a mature student? And would you have any, any advice for, you know, someone, you know, in, in, in similar circumstances maybe who's thinking about going back or, you know, they're due to go back to college maybe in September. What advice or tips would you have for them? 
Um, it's an excellent question. Um, from speaking to other mature students who came back, um, and you'll find that that's what mature students will gravitate towards each other, even if they're not in the same um, same subjects, um, because there is an apprehension about standing out. Sometimes in the first couple of weeks, I felt like in a big purple Barney the dinosaur suit amongst all these young people. And it gradually it dawns on you that you're not noticed and there's a great comfort in that. And then you start to blend and then you realize that you do build good friendships with the younger students as well. But that takes time and it's getting through that anxious time and just realizing that it passes very, very quickly. Because once you become immersed, as Granny said, in your subject, and you do develop a love for your subjects. Um, when I first, the first mistake I made was I was coming in for the subject and going home, coming in for the subject and going home. And I realized that didn't work. Um, so a few other matures a couple of years ahead of me said, when you come in, come in for the day. Bring a lunch or get your lunch there and make it an experience, an educational experience that way. Um, I would also say, um, just to broaden on, on Grania's point as well, um, be flexible in your first year. Um, don't commit yourself to one subject and feel like you have to run with that because that's the decision you made when you came in. Um, for me, one of the great things about the educational experience was learning that you can love three or four different subjects and have a difficult time in choosing at the end. So um, the, the, there were no um, negatives for me, to be honest. Um, within that first year or any year since. Um, once I get into the swing of college life, and it was a slight readjustment, but I think once you start getting assignments, it looks after itself because the time allocates itself because you become engrossed in, in, in your assignments. And again, having said that, um, when I went into philosophy and history, um, the doors of the lecturers were always open for me once I mailed them, of course, and said it was coming. Um, and it was very, um, you know, they were very reassuring. They were very understanding and um, they were very helpful as well. So I think if you're coming in, um, it will, there's no point in saying that it, you won't be apprehensive or a little bit anxious. But once you get through that and put, uh, after three or four days, you blend quite normally because everyone's just trying to get around and do their best. Yeah, I, I think you've made some great points there, Noel. Um, I think your point about, you know, if you're a mature student and to that advice you got from from other mature students to make it an educational experience, you know, to come in for the day and I suppose maybe just get a little bit outside your comfort zone and, you know, make that effort. I think that that's that is really crucial and it, and it would and I don't think it would stand to any student, let alone a, a, a mature student. Yeah. Um, I suppose next topic we might look at is, and I might go to Grania for this. Um, I suppose a lot of people when they when they start college, Grania, it might be their first time living away from home. And um, um, you know, we were talking off air. I think you were saying that you lived in was it City Campus? Or was it in the, yeah in um, as as part of your of your degree? I suppose how did you find it and? Um, you know, what advice would you have for someone who's moving away from home for the first time going to college? Um, I found it quite. I found I was gaining a lot more independence. Um, to be quite honest, with you, I was quite shy, quite panicky when I was first coming into college. I was quite afraid that I wasn't going to make any friends. So I felt like living inside in, inside Limerick City was kind of a way for me to be like, well, no, I can't stay hooped up in my room all the time to go out to the library, to go out to a shop, to go out to somewhere, especially in Mary Eye. It's like the, the campus doesn't usually close too too early, so it's, you can stay in the library or you can wander around the place for a little while. And if there's somebody there to talk to, usually people will talk to you. Um, but I found it was a great push into the start of my social life moving into the into city campus because I had no other choice. I had to kind of keep myself alive somehow. <laughs> uh, 
But I am quite grateful that uh, that I did stay inside that first year. You know, I kind of the one advice that I tend to give to people a lot is to kind of just let yourself relax and just let yourself have a bit of fun because it's something that I never did and it's something that I regret doing um, because once you're once you're ready to, like it doesn't even have to be a party every night of the week because that would be <laughs> that would be a bit too much but it's it's the accessibility and knowing that even if you wanted to meet up with a friend for coffee or anything you kind of have that flexibility to do so um, at any hour, you know, you're not stuck for a ride, you're not stuck for, you know, you're not going to be stuck in traffic or anything like that. But no, definitely it did improve my social life a lot, lot more. And in terms of comfort, definitely do whatever makes you feel comfortable. Yeah, yeah, I think that's some good advice, um, Ronnie, I suppose. Um, you know, I suppose the social side of college is is as important really as the academic side. And I suppose an awful lot of people, you learn life skills and I suppose a lot of us, you know, we grew up, from, you know, from going to college. So I think that's a very important point that you've made. Um, for Noel then, um, I suppose your experience, Noel, was it a little bit different? Were you living in Limerick City or did you commute to college when you started off? Or, uh, how are you situated and what advice would you have maybe for prospective students? Um, I lived in Limerick City. I still live in Limerick City. Um, and as I said initially, I, I would drive in and then drive, drive back out again. And I soon found that um, I was missing out. Number one, it made me more anxious coming in and out the first two weeks. And I realised the third week when I stayed in, I was part of um, a collective social scene th that is the college. And Gran, you mentioned the library there. Um, I would suggest, especially for anyone, but especially mature, the library is your friend. Um, I found the philosophy room and I would recommend it to anybody. It's the quiet room into the left and you go in there and again, the library staff, um, I remember doing my undergraduate um, dissertation and they went the extra five miles to help me out, to get me stuff. And I think once you get into that side of um, learning as well, it, you, you do feel more a part of the college culture. You begin to feel like, um, for me coming back, I began to feel like um, a student because I got involved. And you do get to know the other mature students. I've made some absolutely fantastic lifelong friends um, on the mature course because there are as, as you go further along you begin to get more engrossed in your work it becomes more important to you um, you have more respect for what you're doing and you want to accomplish the best you can do and by engaging with other mature students that that, that um, enriches your experience so I, I, I would definitely recommend um, staying on campus as, as much as you can during the day and like we we, we would have um, we were fortunate enough myself and um, a girl went through, uh, a woman went through college with Tracy, Tracy McCarthy and the younger people actually invited us on a few nights out which while it was very generous and I refused it was very moving as well to realize you had been accepted as, as part of that so if any matures are out there it becomes it, it just becomes by the time you get the second year it's you're part of a collective you're just part of your cohort in your class and and and, and that's a nice experience to have yeah and i think i think that's great to know um no and i think it's just one of the great things about mary and it is the way obviously there's mature students in all of the programs but the fact that they they seem to gel so well with the um other students who are just maybe out of, of secondary school i think that's um probably something very unique maybe to college, but it really does uh, definitely bring something to all of our programs. Um, I suppose a lot of students who, who, prospective students, if they're watching this, you know, a lot of them might be worried about exams or assessment and, you know, what's that like in college? Um, do you want advice, we might, I'll go to you first, Gronia. What advice, Gronia, would you have, you know, I suppose in terms of um, you know, during your exams or in terms of assessments, how how do you best prepare for them, and how are you how can you make yourself as ready as possible 
um, you know, if you're, if you're coming from a secondary school background? Um, well, I kind of, I had to kind of relearn how to study for exams for college. I feel like it's, it's very different in terms of that. But if, for me personally, English and theatre, um, they're both very similar to the English classroom, as in you're writing a lot more essays. Um, personally, for a sit down exam, where you have about 40 minutes, I would usually try to go to the source material first. I would try to see if any of the questions have been given out beforehand and try to prep that way. Um, but for an actual essay where you can sit down, you have two weeks to do it, which I personally love those kind of essays. Um, I would tend to go to the library and I would maybe spend a few hours reading the different books off the shelves and trying to figure out where I wanted to go with the specific question that was given. Um, definitely, definitely the library is a massive, massive help in terms of not just a, not just for information, but if you found you couldn't concentrate at home or if you found that you couldn't concentrate at your accommodation, going to the library and sitting there for five or six hours like you can leave i think you can get little study ticket breaks um you can leave one of those on the desk if you need to go get something to eat but it's it's honestly a massive resource um and it's just available there for free as well so it's it's quite amazing to have a place like that to help out the exams and everything and then in terms of at the end of the year when they have the summer and the winter exams, it's kind of that same process again of just starting with what I find the most difficult, getting that out of the way with it and then kind of building up um, what I want to say in the exam. Because it's not, it's it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be like a question and facts. It's very much a, what do I think of this novel and the themes and what would I think of how this play would be staged and what would be most effective. So it's very much kind of like philosophy in the sense that there's no right answer. So it's very much independent thinking then in the end as well, which is something that I personally didn't get from secondary school. So when I came into first year, I did struggle with a lot of that independent thinking and putting my own voice into the work. But the professors are so, so helpful when it comes to giving you feedback on that and giving you feedback on how you can improve and where you already are good at or what you're already good at. Yeah, thanks, Ben. I think you've given a great insight there. It's very interesting some of the, some of the things that you brought up there. Um, you know, and I suppose, look, you've given some great tips as well. Um, for you, Noel, I suppose you'd be a little bit different to Grania in that there was a much bigger gap between your second level um, education when you when you when you went back then to, to third level. Um, I suppose as a mature student, would you have any? How what was your experience, Noel, or would you have any other different tips in terms of preparing for assessment or for exams, things like that? Um, for assessments, I would suggest um, that writing is 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 a skill that you can develop, and not to be afraid to delete and rewrite if you're not happy with what you're writing. That was a big fear of mine. I thought I had um, reinvented the wheel with some sentences until I realized they weren't that good. And then I found the delete button and realized that this is OK to do this. But it took a while to do that and building the confidence to do that. And the only way to do that is to write. And um, again, I'll go back to the lectures. Um, in, in lectures, if you attend lectures regularly, they will um, give you a rough idea of the topics that will come up and they will give you a rough idea of how to approach those topics um, for the assessments um, same as granny at the library and once you get into that environment it's an environmental thing you get that into that environment where other people are doing the same thing and and, and there's a commonality of purpose well then you, you get into that um, groove and there, there are, um, and the lectures again will give you these, and I think there's actually a course on it in first year as well. There, there, there are um, sources like JSTOR, and you can you can download these. They're free. Mary I offers that service for free, and um, just learn how to structure your your essay. There, and the, there's a history handbook, and you the beauty of history and philosophy. The same as what Granny was saying is that you are encouraged to critique 
and, and build an argument based in history, be, be based on your sources, in philosophy, based on the philosophers who you're working with. And it's a great skill to be able to have, especially w w when you're told that your um, your opinion is important if it's properly structured. Um, for exams, um, again, you're given a rough idea of um, what will come up. And what I would do is, um, I would say if I knew one question was coming up on the First World War, for example, I would make three or four points in my opening paragraph, and then I would follow those points in each paragraph throughout the essay, and then the conclusion, because you have a certain structure there. And I think, again, as Grania was saying, if you practice something that suits yourself before you go into an exam hall, it does ease the stress. So it's like anything. Um, I think it was a famous golfer said, the, the more you practice, the luckier you get. So I think it's the, the more you apply yourself and the more you try and develop your skill writing, the, the rest will, will follow. Yeah, I, that's some great advice there, Noel, particularly your, your, your tips just on, I suppose, preparation for essay or, or for assessment or the assignments that you have and for exams, I'd have some great advice there. Um, I might go back to Gronia again. Um, Gronia, you're, I think you finished third year, Gronia, haven't you? Yeah. So you were on off-campus placement this year. So um, you might maybe tell us a little bit about that and maybe what, what your plans are for, for after your arts degree. Have you any thoughts on where you might go or where it might lead? Yeah, so um, for the first semester of third year, I was actually working in Mary I in the drama department itself, uh, which for me personally was a very Big in, gave me a very big insight into tech theatre itself because how I'm studying theatre it's a lot of literature and it's a lot of theory based so to actually have the opportunity to go in and use my hands and learn about how a play is put on firsthand and to actually do the prop management and the stage management and the audio and everything that's involved it's a very valuable experience but also the professors, they treat you like you are a professional person, which is great. They don't really treat you like a student when you're in that position. They treat you like you're you're somebody who's getting paid to do a job and they kind of expect that quality. Um, the only issue was actually COVID. So a lot of that was put on halt, but I have to give credit where credit is due. They put so much effort effort in the drama department into making sure that all of the students were still getting that same education. Um, a lot of classes were on campus. I think the, the BA cats were the only people who were on campus because of the fact that they were a lab, they, they counted as like a lab subject. Um, so we did end up putting on a performance at the end of the year, which I was quite proud to see the second years. They were so amazing. But um, we were able to help out with that. And I'm so thankful that I was still able to do it under all the circumstances. And then in the second semester, I was supposed to go to France on Erasmus, but I wasn't able to do that. So the professor, Mike Finneran, who would be in charge of the drama department, he gave me the opportunity to swap out. I think I did gold. So he gave me the opportunity to drop two of those subjects in order to do a performance with the first years, which would count as a double weighted subject. So it's a, it's an opportunity I would have never I would have never gotten if COVID wasn't a thing. And I am actually quite thankful that I got to have that experience. So when I finish, I'm hoping to actually either go into a master's or maybe do a few more courses in tech theatre and hopefully get a job down that line. Yeah, thanks, Grania. It's great to, to hear, I suppose, despite COVID and all the restrictions that for, in your case, it was actually proved quite beneficial that you kind of had a unique experience then on your off-campus placement. Um, I suppose time is, is coming, uh, our time is coming to an end, so maybe Noel, um, I suppose maybe it's, you're slightly different to Grania in that you, you are a graduate and you're now doing a postgraduate programme, so you might tell us, I suppose, about your own current plans and uh, you know where, how this was the arts degree and, and philosophy and history or subjects have, have got you to where you are now. Mm -hmm. Well, even though I'm doing my postgrad in history, um, 
philosophy is still um, a, a great tool for me um, to build my writing on. Um, it, it, it taught me how to structure an argument, um, how to progress an idea, how to put it across. Um, and, you know, e even when I was applying for the postgraduate, um, and my supervisor is Dr. Brian, Brian Hughes, and he helped me an awful lot. Dr. Liam Chambers helped me an awful lot. Even Dr. Ulla Bromel helped me a lot, you know, and these people weren't directly involved with me, but you have that um, collegiate cohesion here where uh, it really is, and without sounding, um, putting too much cheese on top, it really is a family atmosphere where everyone is welcome, you know. Um, but when when I was accepted on the postgraduate course, I got a departmental assistantship, um, which paid for f the fees and I got a stipend. And for me, the 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 cherry on top was I, I got an opportunity to teach tutorials. Which for me is it was very daunting again. It was going through the same process of, of will I be able to do it and the encouragement I got and support I got from this from the staff. I felt part of the department. I was they made sure I felt part of the department. They encouraged me. They gave me the confidence and after a semester I felt that I could do it and um, it's a life changing experience to, to be able to do that and to be able to get to a stage where I thought I was getting competent at it and watching the interaction of, of, of the students in, in the tutorial was, was absolutely phenomenal. And the same as Grania with COVID, we had to go on, on forum and it was a written forum and we had to engage with them that way. And again, it was, I was talking earlier, but um, um, keep practicing your skill of writing and I had to write a lot and again it was a different way of writing but I was encouraged again by the staff and, the, and, and given the confidence to be able to do it. So that was another um, aspect of it and you know um, I'm heading in the fourth year this year so my teaching is finished and uh, my supervisor was encouraging me yesterday to look for teaching elsewhere which I thought I couldn't do. So when I joined this at in my 50s, I thought the world was narrowing. But with the education and the experience here, it's actually widening. Which is a reverse of, of, of what I thought was going to happen. So there's, I mean, for, for matures who think they're getting old. Well, this it's not an elixir for youth, but it'll certainly broaden your horizons in every way. I think that's that's a great way to finish um, this session off. No, I think that's that's wonderful advice. Um, obviously, ta our time is up, but I, I'd very much like to thank Ronya and Noel. I think you've given a wonderful insight there um, to, I suppose, not only student life in Mary Macklin College, but also your own unique experiences uh, with your own uh, subjects on the Bachelor of Arts uh, degree. So this session was recorded, so you'll be able to view it on our website, www.mic.ie forward slash CEO, if you want to look over it again in the in the coming days. Um, I just say thanks again to Ronnie and Noel and to everyone that joined us, and that brings this session to a close.